Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the inventor of the CTKS method that helps you to determine smart money buy and sell levels. If you're new, a very warm welcome. And welcome back KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently up 1.2% 1 to 19427. Ethereum is down 0.41% to 1295. Before the CPI prints came out, I put this on Twitter. What we can see here is from the CTKS method, the structural smart money buy and sell levels. Let's have a look how that actually played out. This is the power of knowing where smart money will buy and sell. You can see a hotter than expected CPI print came in. It came down, price came down into this smart money buy area. What did it do? It absolutely rallied up. And note that it did pass through the Armageddon line. We've been cracking the Armageddon line time and time again. But where did price come up to? It came up to that next smart money sell level. These zones are not drawn from recent price action. They're drawn from all of structural price history. And these zones remain current to the start of December. We can notice a few things here. We have a smart money buy level of from 17,931 to 18,407 and another level just much further down at 15,791 to 16,039. That's our smart money support levels, our buy levels. We can see the smart money sell levels, the resistance levels, bearing from 19,462 to 2,340. Bitcoin is currently 19,441. The next major structural resistance level in Bitcoin's price history is 23,260 to 23,985. The real question is why did I put this out? The reason I was reading online that some people are saying $10,000 Bitcoin is coming in. The problem with this is rule four, price moves in waves. And the other thing is people don't do their structures correctly. They typically only use recent price action. You need to get structural levels from all of price history. And that's what the CTKS method does. A lot of people, when they hear Bitcoin is going to 10,000, they think it's going to happen overnight. They think it's just going to fall if price goes down. Price doesn't actually work that way. It's always going in waves, even with a big sell off. In the previous session, we saw a big sell down below the Armageddon line and the Armageddon line has been defended yet again. And well done to all the Borsoggers who went in and picked up some really, really good trades. I picked up quite a few. On Twitter, I also put out the levels of the S&P 500. And let's look at the update. We can see price came down to that smart money buy level, that structural support level at 34.73 to 35. 07. And what did it do? It just rallied up to 3657 to 3683. And the S&P 500 is currently 3669. How you might like to think about this, if price remains strong, it will go to the next resistance level. If it becomes weaker, it will go down to the next support level. That's what we keep our eyes on as technical traders. When we look at the federal funds rate prediction in April 2023, it's currently up to 4.935%. This is really, really high. The key is to understand what do I mean by that's really high. We can see that the percentage probability is 96.3% of a 75 basis point increase in the next FOMC meeting, which is in around 21 days. We can see that a 100 basis point probability is currently zero, but we would expect that to increase. Yesterday, we looked at the statistics for a potential 5% federal funds rate, and we can see that we're actually starting to push above that potentially all the way to 5.5. But the concept is the majority of the percentages or the probabilities favor anything below 5%. 
That's why I drew in this red box. That's a 5% boundary and it was drawn in yesterday. What does this red box actually mean to you and how can you make profit from it? If we're expecting in 12 months the federal funds rate to go to that upper level here of that red box, we would anticipate that rates are far, far too high right now. And one thing that we've always seen when this projection starts to come down, look at what happens to the yields and look at what happens potentially to Bitcoin and to the Nasdaq and also the major indices. They tend to go up. That is, when I look at this chart, I see that the yields are out of whack with reality. They in all likelihood must retrace. And if they retrace, the markets will rally. Just think, yields down, markets up. And what we can also see, the DXY, the US dollar currency index, continues to weaken. It's getting weaker and weaker and weaker. This also supports the idea of a technical bounce inside the markets. What we're actually seeing here is something really, really important. This is a particularly strong smart money, once support level, now resistance level at 112.731. If the DXY does not have the strength to get above that, it will be magnetized down to the 110.304 level. If it does have the strength to get above 112.731, it will be magnetized up to the 113.950 mark. So what's the simple equation here? Dollar down, markets up. That is exactly what we want to see. We can see that the CPI came in hotter than expected. It was also larger year on year and the core CPI was also more elevated. From time to time I put out different things on Twitter just to keep you informed. And one interesting thing is the way that health insurance is actually measured. It's measured periodically. In fact there seems to be a lot of creative accounting in how the CPI is actually measured. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, the link is in the description of this video. When we consider that the markets sold off very heavily, didn't maintain that support and it, it basically pinned it as resistance and the markets fell down again, what we would actually think is that these markets, you just can't make money in these markets. Nothing could be further from the truth. If you're a trader, you can make money and you don't have to go short to do it. In fact, if we look through global markets, they're all in the process of selling down. One thing that we understand as crypto technical analysts, rule four, price moves in waves. It doesn't come all the way down and it doesn't go all the way up. It's always moving in a wave, either up or down. And that's what we take advantage of. I created a NFT, which I call a Ken FT. Hey, why not? And this was lovingly handcrafted by myself just for you. It's rule four, price moves in waves. It's really important to understand this concept. There's another more advanced NFT to, that I put together for our beloved global family. That's on rule 621, buy on red, sell on green. And you can see Borsog, the price eagle there in the background. When you buy on red, you're actually putting yourself on the right side of the percentage. And when you sell on green, you're actually selling into demand. This is how smart money does things. We can see that the CPI actually increased. The federal balance sheet, the Fed balance sheet has remained flat. And when we look at the break-even inflation rates, they've been going up. So what we see is the federal funds rate, probabilities of greater than expected rate increases. Well, 75 basis points is expected and we've had quite a few of those. Before the next FOMC meeting, we will have a probability attached to the 100 basis point increase. I spoke yesterday about the potential that we could see a lower high being put in on the DXY, the US dollar currency index. A lot of people say, Ken, I'm in crypto. I don't care what the DXY is doing. I don't care what yields are doing. I don't even understand the federal funds rate. That will get you in trouble and lose you money. 
That's why in the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass, we make sure that we don't just mark up our charts with the CTKS method, that we check world events and collect probabilities. We understand the economics of the system as well. And then we pop back inside the crypto market, finding the market's focus. But before we buy or sell, master fear. We must replace fear with courage. It takes a lot of courage to buy into a market like we saw in the last trading session. But that's what we're all about as a community. But of course, we set up our trades. We understand the macro picture. We understand the dynamics because we keep our finger on the pulse each and every day. We're scientific with our nature. We don't gamble. The markets penalize gambling. The real question is what could happen from here? What we actually see is a break over this once resistance line. We had a deep rejection in price. What are these wicks about and how are they formed? When you see a wick like this, it basically means that the price sold down really, really heavily right to that end. And what did it do? The buyers came up and said, no way, that's cheap. I want some of that. And they bought the dip all the way up and pushed it up further. That's what the tail means. These big wicks down and big wicks up can be incredibly profitable. And we've seen so many wicks to either side play out inside the market. Just bear your eye or bear your mind on this particular one. What we saw here is price coming through, piercing the Armageddon line. What happened next? It went down and it went down again and spiked up. If you're very fast, you can do very, very well on these trades. So what does it mean about this particular level that we're encountering? What is the probability of price going up? Very much that depends on the DXY. The DXY will drive yields. Lower DXY, more rallies in the market. Higher DXY, collapsing in prices for the markets. Just bear this in mind. And this is why we use our three-dimensional thinking each and every day. Three-dimensional thinking means you say, what if price goes against me? What would I do? What if it goes neutral? What if it just goes flat? What would I do? And if it goes for me, what would I do? Would I sell? Would I hold? Would I add? What would I do? And then you think about the percentages of against and neutral and for. That's what ANF means. ANF is basically like a traffic light. Each time you get to a traffic light, look at it and say, oh, that's Borsog ANF. That's against neutral and for. The red light will stop you. The green light makes you move. You control the trade or investment, but the market controls the return. And sometimes you're in sync with the market and other times you're not in sync with the market. As the market controls the return, all you can do is build your knowledge. Your active learning will make the difference. Markets reward that. They reward knowledge and courage. And if you had the knowledge and the courage yesterday and you leaned in because you saw the contextualized behavior of the market, you would have done very well. So well done to those people. And if you didn't get there, don't worry about it. You can just start small with coffee money. That's why our community does their Borsog codes each and every day. It's for them. And it's really all about saying to the market, market, I'm paying attention. Market, I'm doing my learning. And the market will say, okay, that's fantastic. Let me reward you with profitability. We can see that there's a big correlation between the DXY and the VIX at the moment. The VIX came down in the past trading session. That led to prices rallying up. And you know what's sitting underneath this, all sorts of support levels as well. We still continue to see bond prices selling down and bond yields rising up. That's not healthy for the economic system. And we also see gold under attack. But you notice that gold didn't put in a large rally. Instead, it just whipsawed up and down. And it looks like oil has found a level of support and has started to retrace. Also, we look at junk bonds. Junk bonds has potentially a bullish signal very early days. 
Looking at the longs and the shorts, the shorts were basically guaranteed easy money. They were so certain they were going to do really, really well. And what happened? The shorts got liquidated. They got caught in a short squeeze. And the longs, the longs are not that confident either at the moment. Remember liquidations yesterday were about 30 million. And now what are we looking at? 307.02 million. That's better. This is kind of the action that we want to see. We want to flush leverage out of the system. And you can see 133,490 positions got liquidated. If you don't want to get liquidated, if you don't get, want to get wiped out, just simply buy at spot until you are a professional. And even if you are a professional, you don't need to use leverage. Let's have a look at the past 24 hours total liquidations. Let's say 72% long. What about the past 12 hours? 57% short. Last four hours, nearly 87% short. And the last hour, it's starting to turn around and go the other way, around 96% long. And if we look at the relative differences, the poor old longs have been absolutely whacked. But you can see the short squeeze just pushed the price up. When we're looking at the bull and bear index, we can see the sentiment has dropped rather a large amount from yesterday. And we can see on Reddit especially, people are getting more and more bearish. To hammer in bottoms, we want to see sentiment really waning. We want to get sentiment down very, very low. Why is that? because most people get it wrong. And the institutions tend to reverse everything when sentiment is outrageously high or outrageously low. We can see the total market cap of ETH is still under resistance. All the alts, and that excludes Bitcoin and Ethereum. So we can see the crypto market has been hit hard. Remember, total three does not include Bitcoin and Ethereum. All the cryptos and ETH, but less Bitcoin is total too. And we can see that's very much under resistance. And we can see all of the total crypto market cap, currently 887.643 billion, has staged a bit of a comeback, mainly due to Bitcoin. These dynamics you definitely want to keep in your mind. A beloved global family member said, can it be quite interesting if you track the yesterday's greatest gainers and then just transform them across to see what happened today. Yesterday we saw Luna was one of the greatest gainers and it's not even in the list today. We can see that it spiked up and then was drawn down by Bitcoin's gravity. And look at HBAR. HBAR did really really well yesterday. And very, very few people would ever have considered that it could come down so far, so fast. And it came down to this particular base. Just bear that in mind. That is quite a drop. And then it shot straight back up again. Just keep these things in mind. Actually, understanding the personalities of crypto is something that we dive deeply into the masterclass. You really have to understand the particular personality of a specific crypto in order to trade it effectively. CVX was doing very well but came down with Bitcoin's gravity. This is why we say your beloved alt cannot escape Bitcoin's gravity. And look at ENS. ENS dropped down a little but then rallied like a crazy thing. We can see Lunacy was one of the greatest gainers yesterday, but was pulled down in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. It's currently out of the top eight. And we can see Dash, one of the greatest winners yesterday. Look at this brutal sell off. But this getting on the right side of the percentage, even if you're on the wrong side of the trade, can work out well. But what people tend to do in these cases is just say, oh, I've got to get in. I've got to get in. I've got to get in. It's just going to go to the moon. And then it just dies and they sell. And then you get this whipsaw. It's all part and parcel of learning how to master fear and replace it with courage. And it can't only be courage, it must be knowledge. That's why marking up your charts with the CTKS method is so incredibly important.
Otherwise, you'll just guess as to where support and resistance is. And if you're guessing, you're going to get penalized by the market. The market doesn't like guessing. It doesn't like gambling. It will penalize both. There are always opportunities in the crypto market. And we can see HNT, Helium, came down with Bitcoin's gravity, came up and now down. FTM, Phantom, came down very, very hard. Almost like HBAR coming down. But HBAR at least had a level of support below it. Phantom didn't have that short-term level of support. The greatest gainers today are USTC, the not-so-stable stablecoin. And we can see ENS just rocking and rolling. Synthetics has done a fantastic job of recovering. And this is the exponential nature of crypto. Crypto is unlike anything you will encounter. Look at BAT, basic attention token, just, just basically exploding upwards. Quant exploding upwards as well. SHIB doing very well. And XTZ, Tezos, has done a really good recovery. And KSM, done a very good recovery as well. What we see here is a particular rule. Please let me know in the comments what it is. You don't need to remember the number of the rule, but you must understand the rule. Let's keep that focus. USTC was the greatest loser yesterday, but it's actually the greatest winner today. Maker was the second greatest loser yesterday. ICP continuing to show weakness. Clayton continuing to show weakness. LDO continuing to show weakness as is Adam, as is Flow. But GMT has staged a very, very good bounce. We can see the greatest losers today. CVX, Convec Finance is the greatest loser today. Second greatest is Clayton, not doing too well. Luna is the third. GMT. And we can see a couple, for example, GMT and Clayton were in the greatest losers yesterday. They carried over into the greatest losers today. EGLD just wobbling all up and down, all around the place, trying to get over this particular resistance level, short term, but not much success. Ravencoin just selling off at the moment, but it did a bit of a technical bounce, hitting a level of almost a level of resistance that will play in at 3231, currently 3120. Waves has done a V-shaped recovery. And we're seeing a lot of this across the market. Why is that? Because that's exactly what Bitcoin did. Bitcoin sets the direction and tone for your alts. Carver, we can see the sell down with Bitcoin and the spike up. It's so incredibly important to understand what's happening with Bitcoin's gravity because you can see no alt can escape it. They're all influenced by it, especially sharp breakdowns or outbreaks. <laughs> outbreaks of price. Oh, we could call them breakouts as well. We can see Ethereum just following directional gravitational alignment with Bitcoin, but a little bit weaker. BNB is weaker. And this supports what we've looked at with total three. We can see the alts are weaker than Bitcoin at the present time. And we can see poor old ADA. It's got a lot of weakness inside it. But if you buy at the right times, you'll do incredibly well. Don't forget, you can be on the wrong side of the trade, but on the right side of the percentage, get out and do very, very well. This is why all investors should know how to trade. XRP, just showing a little bit of weakness, but following that gravitational pull, it's been very, very strong. Solana sold down and rebounded. Doge sold down and rebounded as well. Dot rebounded. And Matic rebounded as well. For the time being, the key that you need to keep your eye on is this particular zone, 19,462 to 20,340, and also the lower support level, 17,931 to 18,407. How price reacts in these levels will determine where it goes next. And keep your eye on the Armageddon line as well, 18,942. Bitcoin is currently trading at 19,380. We have such an incredible global family. And each and every day, you pop in your Borsog code. You're saying to the market, I respect you. 
Respecting the market is incredibly important because you're applying your three-dimensional thinking and you're doing your daily risk management. And please note, I don't have WhatsApp or Telegram. Well done, Edwin. And also to Art. I've been doing research on YouTube and why it's deleting comments. It happens on every channel. Some people have found a way around it if they actually like the video and then comment. The comment tends to stick under those circumstances. There's something to do with YouTube algorithms. Many people have done different tests. Liking the video is tends to be one of the best ways to keep your comments. I don't know why. I guess the YouTube algorithm says, well, if you like it, probably you're going to leave a good comment. I don't know what it's about. But please note, the moderators nor myself delete comments. Except, of course, for scammers. We don't like scammers at all. Sorry, scammers. Get a real life. One thing that our beloved community talked about in yesterday's video was respect. It's very hard to respect people when they do the wrong things. But when people do the right things, it's much, much easier to respect them. Perperatum shared some really beautiful things here. Perperatum says, For me, paying respect primarily involves refraining from self-centered thinking. That means listening, empathizing, and understanding. Learning to appreciate the little things in daily life. Respecting yourself for who you are and what you do is pure satisfaction and brings you inner and outer peace. To show respect is to be grateful, to be humble, and to be able to renounce. Renounce in this case just means flexible in your decision making. Disrespect inevitably leads to dissatisfaction and loss. Thank you, Perperatum. Gian Luca said, respect starts from within us through a kind inner dialogue. Very beautiful. Rundle Ridge says, respect is being considerate towards others. If I make an agreement that I will be somewhere, I show respect by being on time. It also means being sincere and authentic towards other people's feelings or opinions. Rundle Ridge says some really good things here. In my opinion, sarcasm, consistently being late or having broken promises is not respectful. And it's not. The problem with sarcas sarcastic behavior, being late, all of those things, even not calling people by their name. Over time, people say, what's wrong with this person? I can't trust them. When you're respectful to others, trust comes naturally because you're building it up. And you're doing so sincerely, authentically, and genuinely, not insincerely. Edwin raises a really good point. Respect is a two-way street. You've got to give it first if you want to receive it. And something really important that Edwin says, if you keep blaming the market and demand the market should give you back a specified return, you'll suffer prolonged series of losses, pain, and mental toxicity. Absolutely wise words, Edwin. And Brett said, Respect opens the door to new friends, opportunities, and strengthens kindness. It's part of integrity and decency. Thanks so much, Brett. And Dreamsick said, On respect, it seems society is stuck at respect must be earned and setting arbitrary hurdles to compete and draw out failure, whereas your suggestion of respecting others by default is a leadership mindset where we are all welcome. Thank you, Dreamsick. If you have friends or family who could benefit from positive excellence and what we do each and every day, please introduce them to our community by sharing a video. We'd love to see them here. We have one of the best communities on YouTube. Priming your mind for profitability in the crypto market is incredibly important. Keeping a positive, optimistic outlook is incredibly important to do so, even when prices are coming down. Why is that? Because there's always opportunities in the crypto market. To prime our minds for profitability, we have the CTKS Creed. The CTKS Creed is a series of positive affirmations that you tell yourself. 
Those affirmations are all about getting you into zone three, where you make money, and zone four, where you keep it and enjoy life. There's really no point in life to be the richest and angriest person on the planet. Instead, forming deep friendships with others, being part of a global family, and living life with gratitude each day, that's what it's really about. That creates happiness. I know the universe wants me to succeed. Every day I show kindness, integrity and gratitude. I know opportunities and life reset daily. I am worthy. I go slow to go fast. I start small and scale with Borsog. Life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally. I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.